Hello again everybody, this is John and Glenn with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today we're going to be reviewing USP Labs Compound 20. Glenn has it there in his hand. Um, it's marketed to be a fat burner, uh, but it's a non-stimulant fat burner. And it also is marketed to be a nutrient repartitioning agent without the effects of insulin. It, partitioning nutrients basically means shuttling them to cells. Um, and insulin is usually what's responsible for doing that. So we're not quite sure of the mechanism of action for that. It is stimulant free. And a lot of what they did with this product, what they do with some of them is they send it to beta testers and then get anecdotal evidence from people on that. Now, for some people, that's um, enough for them to, you know, buy a product or think that it's worthwhile. It's not a criteria that we apply due to the placebo effects and how people are susceptible to that in the linear thinking of people. I felt this, I took this, it must be because of that. So we went and did our research like we typically do to kind of find out what's in there. And Glenn, what, let's discuss the ingredients. Okay. Um, and I'm going to butcher this. So uh, Yeah, some of these are not common yeah. words, so us not being able to pronounce them specifically well is not, it's just because they're not something that are in your average chemistry book. They're yeah. like herbs and things of that nature. So we've got Simplococcus racemosa extract. It's standardized for triterpenoids. Okay, so let's go through what that is. From what I can find on that, it's hepatoprotective or protects the liver. Yeah. That was what most of the research I could yeah, find. Yeah, a lot on. of research on that uh, th that I've managed to find. Yeah, I didn't see anything in terms of fat burning. Um, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We just weren't able to find anything that was peer-reviewed that suggested that. Mm -hmm. um, so not sure why it's in there, to be honest with you, because the other ingredients, to our knowledge, are not hepatotoxic. In other words, are not toxic to the liver. Yeah, something that I did find in that specific extract, when you read through USP Labs' uh, write-up of the product, um, they cite... Uh, that it, or they cite uh, studies on ursolic acid, which is a, a newer ingredient that came out recently that had some studies done on rats to show it can help with building muscle and burning body fat. And they actually cite a study using that ingredient, and it just so happens that the Simplococcus racemosa actually does contain that. But then USB Lab says it doesn't contain the ursolic acid. So there's a little bit of confusion there um, that it's, they're citing a study on the ursolic acid, but then they're saying it doesn't have that inside of it. So a little bit of confusion there. Sure, and they're not standardizing the extract no. for it, at least they're not saying. So maybe that's why it's in there. So that one we're a little confused on. The other two ingredients were uh, pretty confident because we were able to actually find some research on that. Yeah, uh, nice. and first one is N. Cumulari, cumul, uh, let's see, okay, cumoral dopamine and N. Caffeol dopamine. Yeah, and these can be found in cocoa yeah, and things cocoa like that. So they're basically uh, substituents of cocoa is where you could find them. And what they are is they're beta-2 agonists, and you know your beta receptors are adrenal receptors. Uh, specifically, the beta-2 is responsible for relaxing smooth muscle or bronchioles. You know, sometimes you'll see somebody who's like a bronchial dilator to open you up. So I think a lot of the asthma drugs get classified that way. Yeah. Um, in this case, they're specifically also able to increase cyclic and denosine monophosphate. Um, what that can do is actually increase lipolysis, which is basically free up fat to be used for energy. You know, there's a cascade of reactions that involves kinases and phosphorylation. We don't have to get into that. But that's how those work. Now, you found one study, um, and I did too as well, that actually had these two uh, ingredients, and it talked about how they effect on specific cells and how they can actually affect, you know, the beta-2 receptor and how that can help with fat burning. Did you happen to look at the same one as I did? Yeah, I had the same one. Uh, basically, they took a, a specific cell, and it, the U937 cells, and, and they uh, it added these two ingredients to the cell culture. And, and they saw that, yes, it did have that you know uh, smooth muscle relaxing, relaxing effect and the cascade effect of you know the, the body fat, be, or I should say fat, being released from the cell. Um, and But... You have to take that as is, this was outside of the body. It was not inside the human body. So those are many. Yeah, the U nine thirties. Those are cells that are bought and sold by labs that are used for you know research purpose. So that's one thing to consider, like uh, Glenn says. And then, you know another thing too that we found is that sometimes with you know the beta two adrenal receptor agonists is that they could be ubiquitous in terms of activation because there's a lot of um, antagonistic effects on other receptors that can have an effect. So sometimes it can get a little bit gray when you're looking at some of that research and trying to figure out what did what. Now, the one that you, we were discussing was positive in terms of its effect. could be pretty potent. Yeah, it was. It, it, they actually compared it to popular beta-2 agonists uh, that would be sold for asthma medications like your clonvirol, your albuterol, things like that. The, the, they're, they actually said that it was as potent as. But again, the, the takeaway from it is it was done in a cell outside of the human body, um, you know, as we know, there's so much going on in the body with homeostasis and trying to maintain a, a balance. Variables. 
a lot of variables that can happen inside the human body. So, um, you know, to say that this is not going to work, we just don't know. Yeah. Uh, we need to see more studies in humans uh, or done on people. And I know there's a lot of beta testers and things like that uh, that, you know, come out and stuff like that. But, you know, they were shipped an empty bottle, or not an empty bottle, but a bottle, a white bottle with no label on it and said, here, take this. You know, it's a nice marketing thing, and I think a lot of people, you know, we're going to get a lot of comments and videos, hey, I tried it, I like, that's totally fine, we're not telling you that you can't like it, you know, you can't, you know, we're not denying that you may have felt this or that, there's just other things to consider when you're yeah. talking about a supplement, because there's so many variables, and like we said, sometimes people are more susceptible to a placebo effect. Now, there is some research to yeah. show that this very well may be effective. The question that we have right now is with the dose and dosage. We really don't know. Uh, maybe there's some other studies out there we weren't able to locate, but based on what we could find, um, there's potential. We would just like to know a little bit more about the dosage. Um, the mechanism for action seems to be there, and we would just like to know a little bit more about the potency and how does it actually work, you know, in a controlled study where, you know, somebody was given a placebo, somebody was given this, and, you know, they were fed a, a similar diet and given a similar uh, training regimen, and let's see, hey, who burned more fat? Let's look at some other markers to see what's what. So yeah, there's a lot of variables going on, but but uh, there's potential. Definitely some potential. Yeah, there. if you look at some of the other USP Labs products, you know, there's we can't find any research on anything. So um, that's disappointing. But now that there's actually something that we can look at, that's a good thing. So we would definitely rate that in the positive category. So. Um, I hope we were able to answer your guys' questions on this. Hopefully, as more stuff rolls out, we can do an update video. We did that with Pink Magic. You know, initially we really didn't know anything based on what was out there. Did a follow-up. There was still nothing out there. We yeah. were disappointed by that. But so there's potential here if you're feeling it, and, and that's part of your criteria. I feel it, therefore I'm going to use it. Then great. great. You know, yeah. we're, we're not going to steer you clear of that. You know, sometimes we get flack from people who don't quite understand the criteria we're applying to these supplements. So. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please post them in the comments section of the video or the blog. We're happy to answer. And also you can check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thanks for watching. Thank you.